Hello, Internet. Uh, Andrew Potter back for the final episode of My Immortal. Thank God. Um, so as I told you, uh, as you can see, there are clearly not two guests here. That is because one of the guests was sick today and unable to make it, but hopefully she will feel better and that'll be great. Maybe we'll get her on another episode. For today, do you want to introduce yourself or do you want me to introduce you? You go ahead, you got this. Cool. This is Miranda. She's my coworker. She saw the first, what, one or two episodes of my videos and then... Mm, I watched up to number seven. Oh, okay. So she watched the first seven episodes of my videos and then went, I have to read this ahead. I have to get this done now and decided to read all the way to finish My Immortal Before Me. In one sitting. In one sitting. It was painful. It probably was. I wouldn't very, recommend very it. Very painful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so she decided to come on to my episode today and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about My Immortal. We're gonna, we've got some discussion questions written here and we're gonna discuss them. Also a bit of house cleaning. I decided that editing has been very messy as of late. So for now on, I'm going to start a timer here that will tell me when it's been about half an hour, which is when the videos have been around cutting off. Well, they've been cutting off at like 33, 34 minutes. And then at the 30 minute mark, I'm going to try to end them around, the, like finish up my thought and then try to end them there. Uh, so you ready to talk about My Immortal? I suppose. All right. So let's, let's look at some questions here. Uh, It'll be less painful than reading. Them uh, hopefully. Could you imagine? Oh God. Uh, so, so first question is a very easy one. Uh, who is your favorite character from the canon Harry Potter? Not the My Immortal fan fiction, like not their versions. The Harry Potter official J.K. Rowling Harry Potter. The good stuff. <laughs> the normal version. The normal that version. Aren't crazy that... Satanist vampires. Exactly that kind of thing. Okay, um, definitely Hermione. Herm okay, that's I wouldn't have I wouldn't have saw that with you. I don't know why. I would have saw one of the more. Uh, more, one of the more tragic characters, like the Sirius Black, the Lupin, and the yeah. James, that sort of thing. So, so why Hermione? Um, because I'll, I'll... like she's badass and she likes to read, and that's oh, that makes sense. Because yeah, yeah, you like to read. You work in a bookstore. You like to read. I guess that's a thing. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Um, I, as none of you will be surprised to know, mine is Lupin, as I talked about in detail <laughs> in one episode, uh, the episode where. It's revealed that he's a pedophile. What for... about family loyalty, though? You're a Potter. I am a Potter, that's true. That is true. It's like, it's gotta be Harry. No, Harry's the most boring character. Like, that's... <laughs> that, I think that's why the story works so well, is because Harry is such a boring character that literally in all of the adventures, mm. it's other people that are saving the day. Uh, Philosopher Stone, sure. he would not have made it... He wouldn't have made it through Devil Snare without Hermione. He wouldn't have made it through the chess game without uh, Ron. He wouldn't have made it through, in the book, the potions table. He got the table. key by himself. He got the key by himself, but he wouldn't have got to that stage. <laughs> no. And uh, actually, in the books... He only catches the key because there's the three of them. Because it's the three of them, like, kind of, like, uh, finesse it into, like, a triangle formation, oh, yeah. and then he catches it. Um, in the book, he wouldn't have got through the potions table without uh, Hermione actually having logic, because no wizard in the whole wizarding world has logic besides Hermione Granger. Uh, another reason she's my favorite. Another reason that she's your favorite. And uh, he wouldn't have got the Philosopher's Stone through the mirror without Dumbledore. Like, it was only Albus setting that up, that only someone who could who wanted to have the stone but not use it, that could catch it. And then through every other book, again, it's other people. Uh, so basically Harry's useless. Harry, and <laughs> Harry's the vessel. Harry's the vessel that you follow through because the fact that he's this almost nothing character, you can attribute whatever you want to him, and therefore everyone can be like, oh, I'm like Harry, I'm like Harry because of this, I'm like Harry because I'm scared, I'm like Harry because I don't think I'm living up to family reputation, all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, no, not Harry. James is interesting. James I like. I could, I could see James. Because he's... He's not really in the books, though. So no, yeah, he's more like... Uh, depends on your definition of favorite character from the series. Right. Like, yeah, if you're saying living... actively in them, Right. So. Yeah, he's more of the... He's more of a mythos. It's more of a, this backstory of James that you hear throughout. Mm. Um, next question is a little harder. Who's your favorite character from My Immortal? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Like, do I actually have to pick one? You have because to pick one. They're all horrible. Mm -hmm. Who is the less least horrible? Least horrible. Least wow. horrible. Um, 
I almost have to say just Willow by default because she's not really in it, so she's <laughs> so she's, she doesn't have a chance. Because to be she's horrible. not there, she's not as horrible. Fair enough. Um, mine. Some viewers might be surprised. Is Brittany, Brittany the prep? Who's also barely in who's it. Who's also barely in it, but she's just really there. Like she doesn't really do anything. She's like she's um, nothing. she's kind of like Seamus and Finnegan in that. They're there and they're named, but they don't really do, I mean, don't really do anything until the end, which is also kind of Brittany doesn't really do anything until the end, in which case True. she tell. in which case she tells Ebony, hey, you're the reason Voldemort's back, so could you not? <laughs> it's true. And so I, Honestly, I kind of forgot about her. So. And, and that's it, is she, she's, she's a, a small, good favorite. she's a good favorite, because she she's just there, she just wears her uh, Abercrombie and Fitch thing and her jean and, and skirt or gets, whatever you know she gets middle, the middle finger put, put up at her all the time so, all the, for, no so reason. Tra- for no reason so literally there's just like, literally i saw her there so i put up my middle finger at her. yeah there's literally one point where ebony's like i saw her there wearing american eagle clothes so i put my middle finger up at her and i'm like she because she doesn't wear the same clothes you like like i that's, mean that's all it takes really. that's all it t- yeah clearly horrible yeah horrible person yeah I, I like in one of the last episodes i think it went up today or yesterday i say like I think Ebony's the antagonist. I think we're following the antagonist oh, yeah. throughout the whole thing. Oh, yeah. She's the one that, like, changes all these characters into Goss. She's the one that, like, flips off people for random reasons. Like, she's she she considers doing what Voldemort asks her to do, like, all the time. It's true. She's an awful character. She's not a good person. Mm-hmm. Uh, third question. What do you give my immortal out of ten? Like, negative a hundred. Okay. <laughs> Uh, without being hyperbolic, I was giving it a one because yeah. it. I think it's an interesting thing that can show you what not to do when writing fan fiction. I don't know. I'll give it a two for the humor. Two. I I, I enjoyed and it in a it. terrible it's, it's, way. It, and that's gonna lead so. into the next question. But yeah, at the very beginning, it's it's so bad, it's funny kind of thing. So at least you have that. You can at least laugh at it in the beginning, which then leads to question four: Is my immortal bad, or is it so bad it's funny? Definitely both. It, you think it's... Okay. It is. It is horrible, and there are parts that are just flat-out horrible. But a lot of it is so bad, it's hilarious. Yeah. I I think it's very... So bad, it's funny, until there's one point. Yes. You know exactly <laughs> what point I'm talking about, but after that point, I'm like, yeah, no, now you you're just... You had, a 40-minute rant I, on that. I think a 40-minute yeah. rant on how much I Kinda hate... Kind of got the hint. Yeah. The... That, that, that is... The Lupin moment is the moment that... Breaks it's my just immortal word. Just it's just offensive. Out, honestly offensive. Yeah, it's the point that I'm like, you're not just being like so no. bad it's funny anymore. You're yeah. taking something that is so beloved for a reason, and then you just you're just destroying it. Like yeah. again, I, I like I say it in that rant, but I'll say it again here. There's other characters that if you have to do that, I can understand it. Like if you made Umbridge the pedophile, then it's like Umbridge is supposed to be this terrible character that every student hates. Yeah. That would be a reason to hate a professor. Yeah. Uh, Even then, though, I would say... E- right, know, I'm not saying... She, I mean, I can only imagine that she just thought it would be cool to to hate on the teachers and make them horrible people. But, you know, you can hate on the teachers without literally making them pedophiles. Right. Like, that was just so beyond unnecessary. It, yeah. You know, they could have just been nasty asshole teachers. Yeah. You know? And at the same time, there's there. there's professors <laughs> that make sense for and there's professors that doesn't. Yeah. Like, if you wanted to make... It, she makes Professor Sinister or Trevelry, I'm not sure which, yeah, the cool never teacher. Are clear on that? I, I think they're... Same person or I think not? it's a split personality, is, what I, is, I like is my theory. Is my theory, like is that. that it's a split personality. Um, could be. Yeah, but you want to make that the cool teacher, fine. Sure. Make Snape the bad right? teacher, which she does. Because... She does. Yeah. Make Umbridge. The I mean, bad he's teacher. kind of seen as the bad teacher in the beginning of the Harry Potter books, anyway. Right, and you know, then he's there's... nasty to Harry for no reason. He's kind of a douchebag. Well, he has a reason, but it's a bad one. <laughs> yes. Well, but and we don't know that right off the bat. Yes, either, exactly. So I'm saying the very well, beginning. We, we learn see it at this... the end of Philosopher's Stone. So I guess it's just that first book that we yeah, don't. Yeah. Really... Literally, just our first impression yeah. is he's just oh. an asshole teacher and he hates Harry for no reason. Absolutely. So sure, t- take that. Make him more even. Mm-hmm. Make him more of an asshole. But mm-hmm. again to be a pedophile no. spying on his student that's just beyond creepy yeah you know but it's like that and so lupin. it's like lupin is the one that really gets me it's why would you do it with lupin yeah first off she's goth so like isn't werewolf like a cool goth thing yeah like so wouldn't he be the cool teacher like yeah he could be a cool teacher sinister yeah. could be a cool teacher that but makes maybe sense werewolves aren't as cool as i guess vampires. not oh i, I guess mean, it's like the twilight, twilight. battle 
the werewolves are the bad guys, yeah, so I guess. If you're not Team Jacob, they're the bad guys. That's about as much Twilight as I know. she's clearly not Team Jacob. No, Because no. everybody's vampires. A vampire. Everyone cool is a vampire. Everyone cool is a vampire. Yeah. So I guess, thinking in that horrible line of logic, <laughs> I yeah, guess. Yeah, <laughs> in that way it makes sense kind of thing. Um, but it's like... But then she never even mentions him being a werewolf. No. So it's like, that's not even relevant. Yeah. yeah like, we don't even know if he is a werewolf in this twisted, fucked up version of Hogwarts. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, you, like, Umbridge would have made sense to be a mean teacher. Like, again, if you're gonna, if you, if She's you have, because if you have to make a professor a pedophile, like, I'm saying, for some reason, in the Harry Potter universe, you have to make one professor a pedophile. Snape, I can see. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I can see it. Because, again, there's the whole Snape's in love with Lily. So if Harry is the last remaining piece of Lily, there could be a weird sexual thing there. Umbridge mm. could make sense as a, as a She's like, just that a power, yeah, a power dynamic. Just, I am the, I'm better than you, I'm above you, I can do this kind of thing. Yeah. Those two make sense. Slughorn, maybe, just for the joke of, you know, in, in that sixth book, he is collecting little boys, so, yeah. like, like, you could do it. Yeah. No other professor really again, makes sense. She never read the books. Right. She wrote this shit. Although so. I do have a point to point out because you were the one that told me that she hadn't read the books mm -hmm. and because it's put in the author's notes. Yeah. But in one of the first chapters, she main she mentions Saint Mungo's or in her case Saint Saint Mango's. Right. But Saint Mungo's isn't mentioned in the movies at all. Hmm. So she would have had to. Or someone told. Or her someone about told it. her. Like because it's, her her friend that she wrote it with or who edited uh, Raven. Raven had read them, because mm -hmm. it was Raven that got her to read them, as she does say somewhere half-ish way through the series, she does say that she has started reading the books. Right. Thanks to Raven. Right. So maybe Raven just mentioned Ma it was a thing and said, hey, put this in. That's true. But yeah, so it's it's just like, like, there's lots of professors that it just doesn't make sense for, that she made, like, yeah. Hagrid doesn't make sense. Like, Hagrid is all about getting kids to I mean but sorry Hagrid. sorry traditional Hagrid I should yeah that's that's the weird thing is I'm gonna have to say like traditional my, this character my mortal versus Hagrid is a still a teenager, teenager I think. Yeah. well it doesn't say he is but he's a student he's so a student I still. hope he is yeah I, I guess yeah I don't know like that th that would be something that'd be interesting to go into is Hagrid a teenager in my immortal or is he or did he just never graduate, is he a returning student like, like is he just the Hagrid that just hasn't graded because He's not that great a student, like, because mm. Hagrid seems to me traditional Hagrid seems to me <laughs> <laughs> always clarify always clarify always <laughs> um, seems to be a student who would do really well in the later years at Hogwarts, but not in the beginning because later you kind of get to pick your classes a bit. So like he right. could pick the care of magical creatures, he could pick other like right. beast the stuff related he's the stuff at. he's actually interested in and caring about. But it's like the first year, I don't see Hagrid caring. I mean a bit about transfiguration because giving Dudley a tail. Yeah. But it's like, I don't see him caring about charms. I didn't say he necessarily cares about transfiguration so much as it was... Useful. I mean, it was really just, like, revenge. Mm. So. But I guess, even in that sense, it's useful to know to... Whatever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So I have, like, this the clear point of when it's bad. So bad it's funny and when it's just bad. Do you have like a point where you're like, this is where this is when it's so bad it's funny, and after this it's just bad, or are you kind of like fluctuating? It's, it's kind of back and forth. Like the the part with Lupin was definitely just bad, but then there are parts after that that I was back to like, okay, it's hilarious again. Okay. I mean, the whole time travel <laughs> thing was just what the fuck. And what is like. <laughs> What is Voldemort? The serum? only way to stop Voldemort is to go back in time and seduce him. Yeah, of course, of course. Logic. That's the only I mean, reason. What else could you yeah. possibly do to mm -hmm. stop him? Mm -hmm. Clearly, so. Because then there, because then there is the, did Voldemort and Bellatrix in traditional Harry Potter, get together? Because there is like a fan. I think it's like a fan theory that they did, mm. but it's also J.K. Rowling has confirmed. Because he is born under the effects of a love potion, he can't love himself. So, would he have, like, would he even care about know. that kind of thing? That's interesting. Because, like, if we're using the actual canon, Anobi's plan cannot work. 
right. because or He's, Ebony and Obi, whatever. I don't think she even. Knows she doesn't her own even name. care, so I'm not gonna so. hold myself to that standard. Um, yeah, because yeah, because he cause wouldn't. He be wouldn't able care. To fall for her, so. Yeah, he could. He could bang her, and that'd be fine, and he'd be like, "Sure, that's great," but he couldn't but fall he, in love with her. Yeah. So, so, so the plan doesn't work actually. Mm. But again. Again, canon, we are talking about my <laughs> yes. <laughs> like <laughs> right. Not even close. Right. So, so you're saying, but you're saying that it fluctuates between the bad and the good. Uh, uh, okay, this is a fun question. Okay. If you could make one change, one, you only get one. Oh my you God. Only one. This is a Wh fun. This is impossible. This is. <laughs> All of it. <laughs> no, that like, you can't say the whole thing. You get one change. What, okay, like, like plot change or like. It can be a plot change. It can be a character change. It can be one oh change. God. I mean, the Lupin thing. On a serious note, obviously we both agree we hated that. Right. So obviously. So that. yeah. So we won't say that because I think. Aside from that, yeah. those sex scenes. Oh my god. So so what do you want changed about them? Do you want them removed? Do you want them better written? Do you want Either more one. of them? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, there was more than enough. Right. Of, of, of <laughs> his thingy. Draco putting in his my... thingy into her. You know what? Yeah. That no. So they either need to just not be there at all, or better written. I really don't care either way. Dude. Given that it was written by a 12-year-old, right? and how immature the whole thing is, I would say just don't have them in there, you know? So, you just... Any, pretty much most, I'll say most, there are some teen and even a couple 9 to 12 themed books I've seen that have some sex in them, but the majority... It's always just kissing. It's all very innocent. Right. You know? Or it does the, like, PG-13 of, like, make-out yeah. session fade to black. Cut, yeah. Yeah, So then we don't know. Scene. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, just do that. So you just, just want, like, You know, they sex can be making removed. out against the tree. Right. And we can just fade to black. Just That's fade to black. That's really all I need to know. Okay. That's fair. I would I'd be better with that. What would mine be? Mine would probably be... Um, again, first off is the Lupin scene, but as I've said, that's the obvious between both of us, something else. Um, mine would probably be fill in the, the loose threads of My Immortal. Like, there's the scene... It's a tall order. <laughs> I, that is a tall order, because that is a lot of extra stuff. But there's, like, the stuff, like, uh... When, when Hagrid appears for the first time, and Dumbledore, like, uses a spell that summons a black flame that... Uh, Dumbledore yeah, says, if you look boy. within yourself, you can finally see what's through the flame. They never go back to that. No. Like, that Anobi just, never apparently sees within age. herself, so she can't see what's in this flame. Yeah. Um, what is Voldemort's serum, and <laughs> why is Professor Sinister addicted to it now, and what, right? what, like, did she get cured? That never got answered from, like, yeah. there's a bunch of stuff like that where it's just like, here's this Unresolved. plot point yeah. that might be interesting. I'm willing to bet it's not, because of how the story yeah, goes. but... but or, or, sure, I shouldn't say it won't be interesting, because everything about this is interesting. It's, it's never in a good way. It's never in a good way. I would still so, like to see what more So would you ideas. include the contradictions in there? Like, like when Draco can't kill himself by slitting his wrist because he's a vampire, and then ten seconds later we find out that he just committed suicide by slitting yeah, his like wrist? Yeah, like, explain, explain that. I guess I just, yeah, I just want the, more the explained. I want those and, inconsistencies yeah. explained. Like, was it... Draco is something similar to a vampire, but he's not actually a vampire, and that's why he could. Is it just... But then he came back, so... Right. He either didn't actually commit suicide, or he did and then came back to life. That was never explained either. Right. Uh, he's dead or, and then he's back. Or the willow. The willow, the willow contradictory of um, expelled her... Expelled and expelled, murdered. Expelled, murdered, raped, and, then, and back. then back in another chapter, no mentioning nothing. Like, yeah. I want all of like, that... <laughs> I want everything explained about why? this. Why? How? I'm sure it would like, kill me, and I would hate myself for it, but I want and it I all mean, explained. how much longer would the damn thing oh, be God. I mean, it's already 44 chapters. Yeah, exactly. It'd be like 80. <laughs> I wouldn't say 80. No. It's, it's well, probably it, it 50. it depends on chapter length. That's it true. It kind of fluctuated with that, too. They did yeah. get longer further on. It sure did. <laughs> but the first couple chapters were, like, literally a paragraph, so I mean... Yeah. So I, I, and I mean... It, yeah, so it's not even I want, like, extra chapters explaining it. It's I want them explained, like, in that mo in that yeah. story. 
organically, as organic as that gets. Which is to say not at all. Which is to say not at all. Um, <laughs> six is going to be fun. Oh, boy. Hey, Miranda. Yes, Andrew? What is the thing you liked most? <laughs> Getting a literal headache from reading it. Yeah. That was so fun. Yeah. Um, what did I like? Wow. I really can't. <laughs> it can even be Jeez. you liked it because it was so bad. Like, that's, again, yeah, that's, was there one of those really moments? the only... I think that's the only answer. It's really the only answer. Yeah. Just the the weird, almost perverse enjoyment of of like reading and just laughing at how absolutely horrible it is. So is there like a particular scene you would say you enjoyed in that way the most or I mean those sex scenes again. That's that's my answer is the sex scenes. The sex scenes. Cuz they're the they're the thing for me it's consistently just... that is so bad it's funny. Like yeah. even past the looping point. They're the same every single time. Like Basically, yeah. She, like it's always never... oh it's always words that she can't use like it's always like yeah. uh what's well, one of them her her womanly tool is one of them which i love because i've yeah. never heard it described like that no nope. i've heard a guy having a tool like i've heard the penis yeah. described yeah i can say penis i'm 23 oh my god we can use that word yeah we're we're adults so we're gonna say penis and stuff like that <laughs> and stuff like that and stuff like that vagina vagina that's a thing that's a thing um or you know you know what womanly tool yeah it's all the same. yeah it's all the same all but the same. yeah like i've heard a penis called a tool i've Not, never heard a vagina yeah. called a womanly tool or anything of that nature it's, it's almost creative of her it, it's almost in a painful way it, still it, the sex scenes are the so painfully painful. creative thing so painful yeah his thingy in her you know what so so we're agreed and sex they scenes did it for the first time and they did it for the first time keenly against a tree <laughs> right keenly keenly I like I like all the the contradictions in language too. How they'll do something like excitedly but depressed at the same time, and I'm like, how do you? Because they're the one of the sex scenes. Even she she says something about how they have sex passively. 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 But then keenly also. I'm pretty sure was in the same one. There. Oh okay. They they started having sex keenly, but then passively, or they mm. like, I don't remember. Mm. But I'm like, so which is it? Yeah. Are you? Because like literal opposite meanings here. Right. And yeah. then, and when she's talking to her friend at one point, she's excited, but also depressed or oh. sad at the same time. So I'm like, which? Because <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also like that ev almost everything has been done sexily by right? Ebony, Ebony, Dementia, Darkness, uh, Ebony, Darkness, Dementia, dementia. Raven, Way. Uh, everything. What a name. She has jumped sexily. She has she has yep. rolled sexily. She has walked sexily. She has um, flipped someone off cars. sexily. Yep. Climbed in and out of cars sexily. Like everything yep. can be done sexily everything. by like everything. I would you know what like, I would. I don't love? even know how you jump sexily, but apparently That's, <laughs> I call that one out in one right? of the videos. I'm just like no, <laughs> no. Didn't didn't she jump into the time machine sexily? sexily yeah, and it wasn't it. Sure. Or was it? I think she jumped into the pensive sexily, which right. also led to a contradiction was, for me. Is I was that like the time machine. That's what I don't know. Is like she jumps. Cause it, cause she it, jumps into it and then she goes back in time. So I thought that was the time machine. Well, they're two different things. But the thing that really gets me is that she jumps into the pensive, and can interact with everyone. Right. A pensive in the you're, in the traditional Harry Potter canon. Again, let me specify. You're just seeing the memories. You're just seeing the it's memories. Not you from yeah. A three like a three sixty angle, all that kind of stuff. But you yeah. can't interact with anything. No. Like if we were in a pensive like right she... now, I could literally pass right through you. And you would be doing whatever you would have done at the time and you wouldn't act like, Oh shit, Andrew yeah, just went through I me. Don't see you. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't change the past. It she jumps in shows and you she's the past. There. Yeah, she's right there. She's talking with uh, Tom Riddle. Not to be confused with Tom Ridd. Who may or may not be the same person. Really don't know. Don't know. Just don't know. <laughs> But yeah, so all of that is going on. Yeah. Um, Makes no sense. But then she mentions another time machine later. I did know yes. that. Yeah, she mentions but... Morty Mc McFly's. Right. Which, Cause... as a huge Back to the Future fan, absolutely made me upset. Because I was like, first off, because she says specifically... Can't be surprised, though. I mean... I mean, 
A little bit, because she's like 12 when she's writing this, and it's in like early 2000s, and Back to the Future is very 80s. And I feel like a goth 80, like I feel like a goth kid that's our, our age at 12 doesn't really know about Back to the Future unless parents True. or older siblings or like True. a specific reason. I feel like it's well, like... Maybe her parents were into it. I mean, that's true. I feel like it's not till like, 16 Although, that you really start to get into old movies. If her parents were into it and made her watch it, she would probably think it was, like, the height of uncool, stupid oh God, fucking yeah. preppy well, show, and she would not no, have included it. she would have liked uh, Back to the Future 2 when it's in the future, because it's all very, like, apparently... Uh, t apparently 2017 or whatever year it was. Like, we're all supposed to be in very grunge-esque clothes... Um, okay. with, like, shoes that can automatically lace, that I'm still mad about! <laughs> and we're supposed to have hoverboards, that I'm still mad about! <laughs> I mean, we have things called hoverboards. Yeah, but no, no. And I feel like that's the reason that they're called hoverboards, is because they were like, oh, what if in 2017 we come out with a hoverboard? It's like, no, yeah. fuck you. I don't want a wheelie not... thing. I want it to hover. It's that's why it's called a hoverboard. It's because right? you're hovering. And I actually never understood that when they came out. I was like, why is it a hoverboard? It I think it's because the it's platform like that you're on. It's like a sideways skateboard. Yeah. It's yeah. not, it doesn't hover, so yeah. why is it a hoverboard? I feel like it's because the platform that you're standing on is above, like it's not on the ground. So like, I feel okay, like. Okay, but like. I can't really. Same with a skateboard and. Yeah, but a skateboard is like you, like, like the wheels are in front of you. So like you very much feel that you're on wheels. Whereas like the platform is here and the wheels right. are here. So it feels so you like. feel like you're hovering. Yeah. Still. Again, I don't enough. like them and I'm still mad about it. <laughs> yeah, we got that. Did you? Okay, good. Are you great. still mad about it? I'm still mad. Okay. Although, although I am happy that Michael J. Fox has. Michael J. Fox? Yeah, Michael J. Fox has a pair, because Nike has invented the sneakers with self-lacing, like you hit the, you hit the, a button on the Seriously? side of the shoe. Uh, you hit a button on the side of the shoe and it's like, they constrict, like they can, like they Thank you for this demo, foot. I love it. Yes, right? Uh, it like tightens around your foot to feel like it's laced up. So they don't actually have laces though. No, but the shoes didn't actually have laces. Like okay. they were like straps, like they were kind of like Velcro and it was just like, they would automatically like fit for your feet. And so they ha they wanted to release them, I thought it was supposed to be ended this year, but maybe it's next year now. But they had 10 made, and he was the first one to get a pair. Because he's Marty McFly, like, he's gotta get one. Like, I was, yeah. and I was so happy watching that video. It was one of the few things that brought me joy in the world. That's As I was good. just like, ah, oh, Marty McFly has his sneakers now. <laughs> now whoever it's makes- about damn time. Exactly. Now, whoever makes the hoverboard, I'm going to be watching them, because they better give Michael J. Fox a hoverboard for free, too. If we're even alive to see that. Uh, Who knows? I will be. Cryogenically frozen. That's my plan. Of course it is. I'm not even going to get into that. Next question. <laughs> um, well, we only have, like, two minutes left on this video, so I guess we're going to do... are we on the last question? Right yeah, now? okay, sure. Let's start it and see if we can get through it. Um, so this one came from the guest who isn't here today. She, I asked the invisible person. The invisible person. The invisible. Cool. Um, who I will say who it is at the end of next video. So stay tuned. Ooh, um, mystery. Mystery. Um, so I, I messaged both of you last night. And I said, "Is there anything specific about this, this, this story, this tale that you wanted to I talk couldn't. about?" I tried. You tried. There's just so much, and I just. <laughs> Exactly. So much. So, mystery guest asked about the uh, about something in the author's note, the little subplot there. So you should know, you should might know this a bit better than I do because I mm -hmm. only started reading them about halfway through, mm -hmm. and that is, what happened to the sweater? That is a good question. <laughs> what do you yes. think happened to the sweater? There's Does no Raven way have to it know. still? Did Maybe. Tara get it back? I mean. Could really go either way, because I feel like if she got it back, she would have mentioned it, because apparently right. it was a huge deal. Yes. I mean, this sweater was a friendship ender, mm -hmm. so you'd think she would mention it. Right. Which makes me think she never got it back, but they made up. Right. And she said that she gave Raven's poster back. Right, so I feel like so it was an exchange. So then I would assume she must have gotten her sweater back. Like, I feel like it had to be an exchange so, to keep yeah. the peace kind of thing. Right? Like, a, you know, if you want to come into Terra Opia, Otherwise they wouldn't we will be give friends you... again. Right. You know, and Willow would never have come back from the dead. Exactly. So, I assume she got it back, but it's never stated. We'll never know for sure. We'll never know for sure. That is one of life's great mysteries, you know. Is is uh, is the Mona Lisa a self-portrait as a female? 
who invented the pyramids and did Tara ever get her sweater back? Those are the three up great there. mysteries. Up there, yep. If you have an answer to one of those three great mysteries, Please. comment below because <laughs> I need to know. Yeah. I think it's aliens. Like, I'm concerned about that sweater. Yeah, I think it's aliens to answers the pyramid. I think, yes, I know. I think Time's aliens up. answers the pyramid. I think, uh, yes, it is a self portrait. And I think, yes, Tara got her sweater back. Sounds reasonable. But that's all the time for this video. Stay tuned because it's going to be a part two. We're going to answer seven, like, more questions. More questions about my immortal. More headaches. Uh, see, you, see you in a couple minutes, hopefully, for you.